Hey friends, welcome to day one of our spooky writing workshop. I'm so happy to be here. Today in Chicago, it is overcast and it is kind of cool outside and I can feel that that fall is coming and that it's not gonna be long before everyone catches up with me and everyone is in the Halloween spirit. I mean, right now here in my kitchen, I've got this bowl of mostly eaten candy that's clearly Halloween candy. And there's a little squishy skull in it. So you guys know where my mind is at. It's kind of always on Halloween, but especially right now. So this is perfect timing for us to be working on you guys developing some spooky writing abilities, okay? Um, before we dive in, if you all don't know me, if you didn't have a chance to watch the book talk video that I made, my name is Lindsay Curry. I write spooky middle grade novels. Most of them are set here in Chicago and they feature a ghost legend or two. Um, the one that I had come out in 2017 was this book, The Peculiar Incident on Shady Streets. And then the one that just came out, friends, is Scritch Scratch. Isn't that a beautiful cover? I like to get that really close to the camera because it's so bright and pretty, but also ominous at the same time. So this just came out on September 1 and I'm really excited for you all to read and discover Claire's story. But I'm also excited for you all to develop your own spooky writing abilities. So we're gonna start, we're just gonna jump right in today because there's a lot to cover. Um, if you have access to a printer, friends, I'm gonna tell you where to find the materials that I am using today. And if you don't have access to a printer, it's not a big deal. You can also just grab a sheet of paper and a pen, okay? Because I'll be reading everything out loud that we're doing today, so it's not critical. But if you do wanna print it off, you're gonna to go to my website, which is lindsaycurry.com, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y-C-U-R-R-I-E.com. Go to the Teacher Resources tab, Click on that tab and scroll down. You're gonna see something called Spooky 101 and that's this writing workshop. And what we're gonna start by focusing on is part one and that's called setting the tone of your spooky story. So you would click on that link and bring up the document and print it off and then you're ready, okay? All right, so here is where I like to start when I'm talking about writing spooky stories. I think there's a misperception that in order to write a scary story, you have to start with a scary location. So this is a question I get all the time when I do school visits. It'll be something like, well, which do you think would be scarier? Uh, a haunted house or a graveyard? And friends, a haunted house and a graveyard are both awesome. They're both scary and wonderful options. But what I want you to know is you don't have to set your story somewhere spooky in order for it to be a spooky story you can use a perfectly normal setting that's not even remotely scary at all. And your writing, your language, and your descriptions are gonna set a spooky tone, if that makes sense. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's dive right in. We're gonna use the example of a carnival. Now, carnivals to me are usually bright and chaotic and loud and fun. Those are ways that I think of carnivals when I imagine them. I've only been to a couple in my life and they were very energetic, but fun. But there is a way to write about a carnival setting that isn't bright and energetic and loud and fun. We can just as easily write about a carnival that's eerie and frightening in tone. So let's start by taking the idea of a carnival and writing it in two different forms. I'm gonna to read to you what I have written, okay? And we're gonna dissect this afterward. We're gonna read carefully through the language and figure out what I did to make it seem not scary. Then we're gonna read the second paragraph, the scary version, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna look at the language and see what I did to make that very scary, okay? So let's start with the not scary version. Here we go. I will read this out loud. If you're following along on your paper, it's right here under the not spooky paragraph. The sun beats down on my shoulders and the playful tinkling of the music at the fun house echoes through the park. The smell of popcorn wafts past my nose, making my stomach growl. No, no food and no fun house, not yet. I have something else planned first, something better than popcorn or cotton candy or even those weird mirrors in the fun house that make everyone look lumpy, the falcon. 
Shrieks of excitement echo into the air, followed by the thunderous whoosh of a roller coaster plummeting down a steep drop. My hair whips back as I stare, open-mouthed at the Falcon. It's the carnival's newest roller coaster. Zero to 60 miles per hour in three seconds. Six loops, dozens of drops. I can't wait to go on it. All right, friends, what do we notice about this paragraph, our not spooky paragraph? If I sit down and I just start looking through the sentences one at a time, I'm gonna grab my pen. The first sentence immediately opens up with the sun beating down on the character's shoulders. Now, unless I am setting this in a desert and my character is extremely thirsty and uncomfortable, most of the time the sun is gonna give us a pretty warm, uncomforting sensation. And I think that's how it works in this sentence. It kind of makes you feel like, hey, it's summertime and um, it's carefree, right? And then we've got the music at the fun house being described as playful tinkling. All right, that doesn't sound half bad, right? Um, we've got the smell of popcorn, also a very comforting smell, one that reminds me of carnivals and zoos and things like that. Um, they talk a little bit about the fun house. And then there are the descriptions of the roller coaster of the Falcon. And all of these descriptions, friends, if you notice, are really exciting. They're happy descriptions. We have shrieks of excitement, right? Um, we've got all of these descriptions about how the roller coaster functions. It's got zero to 60, all these loops, dozens of drops. And at the very end, the last sentence that our character leaves us with is, I can't wait to go on it. There is a lot of excitement packed into this paragraph, just through the language and the imagery, right? But what if we chose to flip that? What if we chose to use that same setting and instead I decided to use language that wasn't exciting and fun and carefree, and instead I chose to use language that was more ominous? Let's try that. We're going to example two. So if you're looking for it in your papers on the second page, whoops, right in the middle. Spooky. The park surges up into the gray sky in a mess of twisted metal roller coasters and monstrous rides. Shrieks of terror drift on the humid breeze. The gentle tinkling of music plays in the background coming from a large red and white striped tent labeled Fun House. It's eerie, that music. Soft, like it doesn't need to compete with the other sounds here but loud enough that you can hear it anywhere you go in the park. I don't know why for sure, but I don't like that music. The hair on my arms and the back of my neck rise up, warning me that the funhouse tent is bad news. It looms like a striped giant against the blackening sky, a rumble of thunder in the distance making it seem even more ominous. I take a step forward, then pause. What's inside the funhouse tent, and why does it seem anything but fun? Okay, let's take a closer look at this particular sample. This one feels a lot different, right? Instead of having the sun beating down, what do we have? We have ominous clouds, we have a blackening sky, a rumble of thunder. This is one of my very first tips for you all. You don't always have to set your scary story to bad weather, but sprinkling in a little bad weather, like a good seasoning, is always good to do. It does put your reader a little bit more on edge. It does lend a spookier vibe than a nice, warm, shining sun and blue skies. So if you have the opportunity to work in a little bit more um, spooky, dark weather, go for it. Voila, scarier scene, right? Okay, let's back up and look at the way that the actual rides and the carnival itself are described. So this time, our roller coaster is not being described the same way. Before we had shrieks of excitement, this time I'm underlining shrieks of terror. Very different. Also, we have the park surging up into this, the gray sky in a mess of twisted metal roller coasters and monstrous rides. This makes this carnival already feel a little scary and unsafe to me. You guys, twisted metal roller coasters? Hmm. That's a little bit alarming, right? And then we've got this funhouse tent. We've got a description of the funhouse tent, but the music coming from it, even though it's still kind of quiet and tinkling, it's described as being unsettling, right? It's quiet, but you can hear it anywhere you are. 
that's also a little bit scary. Moving forward, friends, we've got our weather, and then we also have our character leaving us with another thought. So rather than it being, I can't wait to go on this roller coaster, it's what is inside that tent and why is that tent making me feel scared? Okay, so that's something I wanna focus on a little bit here. So we've talked about how the descriptions of the rides and the carnival themselves are very different and painting them in very different lights, right? But also the way my main character in both paragraphs is reacting to the environment is super different. And that puts the reader in a different mindset. So when my character is excited and my character is saying, I can't wait to go on it. This is the best new roller coaster. It's going to be so fun. That's going to make us automatically and the reader feel excited. But if the character is really holding back and a little bit anxious about it and saying, I get the feeling that there's something wrong here, I think it tends to make our readers and us a little more cautious as well. So these are all some tips and tricks that I want you guys to think about when you're writing your spooky stories. So the three main things that we've talked about in making our scary, no matter what setting you choose, right? You could choose the prettiest, brightest, sunniest park in the world and still make it spooky. But if you have the opportunity to sprinkle in these things, right? Maybe some thunder here and there, right? You don't have to make your entire story stormy, friends, okay? That's not necessary. I always look at these tips as truly being like cooking. If you were to be baking a casserole and you took your pile of salt that's supposed to be in the casserole and you put it in just one spot of the casserole and you didn't stir it up and you left it there, someone later is gonna get a bite of that particular salty spot and they're probably not gonna be real happy. It would be awful, right? So what you really wanna do is take that salt and spread it around in the casserole, stir it up so there's a little salt everywhere. That's how you wanna treat your spooky details. You want there to be details all throughout your story, not just in one spot, sprinkle them in there. So weather, right? Descriptions, spooky descriptions, just like we were talking about, and the way your character is reacting to their surroundings is very important. Make sure that that matches your descriptions and make sure that it's appropriately spooky. Okay, now it's your turn, friends. I have a fun challenge for you. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to look around the room that you're in, doesn't matter where you are, look around that room and pick an object, any object, okay? So um, let's say it was me doing this, I would pick my mug. Okay, and then I want you to examine your chosen object, pretending that you've never seen it before. You have no idea what it's doing there. You don't have any clue who left it there or what it's for. And I want you to write two descriptions of that object, one of them spooky and one of them not spooky, using all of your new techniques to do this, okay? Don't forget, you guys can do this. It doesn't matter what object you pick. I trust that you can write these descriptions and you can make this what you want it to be. So let's get spooktacular and see what you guys come up with. Up next in the spooky writing workshop, we're going to be working on um, several more things like using all five of our senses for even more vivid descriptions. I think that's actually gonna be our next chapter. So get ready and I will see you guys soon. Bye everyone.